guys, boy, Pastor Levi Rose. Welcome to our virtual ser- service on Wednesday. It's Wednesday edition, and we are so relate you guys are joining with us today. We, it, this is one thing I love about having our men around me right now. It is Father's Day month, so we chose to start this during the journey in June, guys, talking about men with the message. Now, everybody will be a part of this message from child to woman to anybody can hear this message, but our goal now is to talk about the voice of a man, the man with the message. We're going to go through the Bible and try to find some guys who we can dialogue with and relate to what we're talking about. And so, again, jump in with us. I'm going to pray for you real quick, and we're going to get started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, bless our viewers and audience around the world. We love you. We honor you. Thank you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, before I get started, I'm going to, I'm going to have a seat real quick. I'm going to get back and talk to you guys in a minute. But I want to look at you real quick. There's a lot going on in our country and I wouldn't be a pastor if I didn't try to speak somewhat to that um, with, um, with stuff going on in Minnesota, stuff that happened in Glen County in, in our own state. And there's a lot of undercurrent stuff that's happening in our nation. This message, men with the message, is going to almost invoke you. Invoke me also. It's going to almost make me do a gut check because all of us in this room got a message. And you can choose to sit on it or say something. Mama, you can choose to sit on it or say something. Dad, you can choose to sit on it. Or say something, Mr. Lawyer, the chief, president, whoever you are, all of us got a message to say, but we can choose to sit on it or be, or be vocal about it and then move out on it. This whole sermon series this month is about men with a message. And we're going to pick some particular men out of the Bible, prophets, who can just speak to us, speak through us, as God challenged and invoked all of us to be a voice for him throughout the earth. We are, we know, the days of being on the sideline are over. You got to be like the guy, the guy, the TV show said, put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. You can't just be the water boy no more. You got to get in the game. Fit, get in where you fit in. You could be a lawyer, a banker. Your voice needs to be heard at any level that you at. And so here today, we're going to jump into a message. Uh, I was talking about, uh, I want to call, already call it a stirring up voice. A stirring voice. A stirring voice. A voice that aggravate you. I'm going to aggravate you one way or the other. I'm going to aggravate you to get mad at me, frustrated with me, or you're going to run to God. One way or the other, I promise you, the message that we speak got to to challenge people to have to think inwardly where we are right now, especially what's going on in our country. Uh, Zechariah 4-7, where we're going to start at, it said, what are you, O great mountain? Before Jerubbabel, you you will become a plain, and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Guys, you know one of the great, greatest um, theologians and historians we love to talk about a lot is Dr. Martin Luther King. And I love uh, uh, some of the, 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 the historical part and the, the challenging part of Dr. King is that he chose to arouse our conscience. Not, he chose to arouse our country. Our country wants to look at stuff, not just sit back and be complacent about stuff, but to arouse our country, our country, and it made people mad with him. We celebrate Dr. King more now that he's dead than we did when he was living because he aroused our country. But he didn't just want to arouse our country. He wanted to arouse our mobility. So you can talk all day and have, have a group session like we got right now, and that's okay. But what are we going to do after this message is over? What are we going to put feet to fire? Are we going to move with this message and show that we are concerned not just in thought, but in deeds and in action. And so this tech, this message today, this boy named Zachariah, he set us up right. I mean, we're right in the thick of what's happening around our country. And I'm glad this guy is using his voice to arouse us. But I'm telling you about another voice that came along after him, years after him, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was walking one day in Matthew 21, 18. He was walking one day from the temple. He said, now in the morning, when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing, and verse 19 said, seeing a, lo- a long fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, no longer shall ever there be any fruit from you. And at, the, at, at once the fig tree withered and died. God, look, he walking around and said, listen, it aroused Jesus that this tree is here and not producing. That made Jesus upset. He said, die, you go. You're, you're no need. You're, 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 you're no good for me. I, I look at these guys right here. We all fathers or whatever, or surrogate fathers. We're no good for, good for our kids if all we're going to do is sit and let stuff go to waste. You're no good even as a church 
If we just sit here and, and our church be in the community and we don't be a voice, what is that? What do I mean, Pastor, what is that? That we just we sit by our hands fold and watch folk down the street, watch stuff happen in Minneapolis, and we just post on, we just sit there and don't say something? That's no good, God. We're at a place now like, like Jesus. Either move, share bye bye. Either get out or do something or die. Get out of the way. Is what Jesus is saying. He's arousing a conscience. And right now, we come along today to arouse our conscience to do something. And we plan to be a, a stirring voice. And when we speak, we stir people up. And so let's, let's, go, let's go to Zechariah and walk this text just a little bit and then hear what the voice of the Word of God is speaking to all of us. Now, to give you a backdrop on Zechariah, Zechariah is a prophet. And he's also from a, is a prophet and a priest. Now, a prophet back in the old days was the voice of God. The priest, he, meant, he, he, he ministered in the temple. So Zechariah got two things going on. He's the voice of God, and he got the bloodline where he knew how to minister in the temple. Every man right here around me right now should be a prophet and a priest. Uh-huh. You should be a prophet and a priest. You can't just be a priest where you're just giving out stuff. No, you got a, a prophet speak the voice of God. A prophet speak blessing of the children. A, a prophet may say stuff that challenges you. You just can't be a priest. You got to also be a prophet. And so you say, well, pastor, I like this. I like that dialogue. Mom, dad, listen, the prophet and priest back in the Old Testament was, it was a patriarchic, it was like a man. Only a man could be a prophet and a priest. Well, Jesus came down and tore the wall down. So now a prophet or a priest is not no genetic force, a gender force, male or female. A prophet now is an anointing. A priest now is an anointing. Now, I may sit in the place of a dad, but my wife also the prophet. My wife is also, y'all, y'all, you know what I'm saying? It's an office now. It's not so much, it's not so much the man, male, female, which I understand that was back then, but now it's more an anointing on us. So even right now, the mayor of Atlanta, she's a female, but she's a prophetess and a priest at the exact same time, as long as you hear the voice of God. Now, so Zachariah come along, and he's a prophet, and what he does, there are God's people have gone through some hard times. They had sin been in captivity for 70 years. They've come out of captivity after 70 years of hard times. Things shut down. Churches closed. Churches closed. After 70 years, they come back. And when it's time to go back to the temple, go back to church, the Bible said that the temple is torn down. The walls are torn down. They go back to church and things are not the same. Come on now. We are out here. Out here. Our churches are, are closed right now. You can like it, like, like it or not, y'all. Our churches would never be the same. We got to look at things different, preach different, sing different, greet different. Things are not the same. So they go back and they immediately try to build the temple. God challenged the rule board. It's a governor. Say, hey, go rebuild the temple for me and do what these are doing. The Bible says he laid the foundation. He put the foundation down, and it was good at that. They laid the foundation. They built the temple. They started building the temple. But like everything we do, let's be honest, like all things we do, sometimes we start building stuff, and then obstacles come. Now, I, I, I hate to just to, 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 to dialogue this way, but, guys, we must admit, third time we all built something and start laying the foundation, and, and what happened, life comes. More life come. We like to this whole hustle way. And these guys are the same way. They, they start out doing what they think God called them to do. I mean, they, they start laying the foundation. Zubo start laying the foundation. And sure enough, anything you start, and especially God in it, expect some backlash. This guy named Zubo is laying the temple. And sure enough, here come obstacles. Here come obstacles for out of nowhere. But guess what he does, God? He's he turned around. I got to talk to you. He turned around and stopped. They stopped building the temple. And you know what? That's, you know what? We tried this. I'm not, I'm not condemning them because we've all been there. We've all been there. Some of us are there right now where we pray for God for stuff to happen. You know what? Mm -mm, you know, this is enough now. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't pray it out. Or you spoke life of your children. And they, got, they got worse than better. And you got to the place, you know what? Mm -mm, I'm not doing it. They're at this place right now where they're, they decided, you know what? We're back. Yeah, I'm back. In God's temple, we tried to go back and do things like you said, do it, but the pressure was too hard. And the Bible said they start building their own houses instead. They became, you know what, it's easier to go build my house, take care of my folks, 
and let God's stuff go to waste. And what the root was said, the, 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 the Zechariah the, is now confronted with this issue. Here's what Zechariah does. The Bible says Zechariah now is confronted with, with having, having the charge to confront or cost this area. A prophet and a priest don't just let stuff be. Oh, no. A prophet and a, and a priest speak to something. They don't let stuff be. They're going to challenge the situation. So let's watch what Zechariah does. Zechariah 4 1 said, The angel who was speaking to, to me with me will return and arouse me as a man awakened from his sleep. Arouse me, he stirred me up. Oh, man. I, I, y'all forgive me. I got to talk to my guy real quick. Listen. <laughs> I got a choir now, see. So I gotta, I've been out of church for a while, so I got a, a group to talk to. Listen, this guy, he, the right, this, is, this is the fifth time God came to, to Zechariah. The fifth time in a vision, God speaks to Zechariah. He's speaking about end times, stuff going to happen. Now he gets a place where he aroused Zechariah. Because it's one thing to be aroused about something you got to do, but now I need to arouse you for something he got to do. I said, oh, that's something totally different. It's one thing about you building your house, but now I need you to go tip him because there's something great on his life, and he just can't sit there and waste his life. So now God is now arousing the prophet and the priest to go speak something to this guy named Zerubbabel because he got more in him than what he's doing. He got, you got, you got more, you said, bo, 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 shama. you got more degrees than you got money. Uh-uh, that, 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 you got more intellect than you got a word. You got more of that going on than God aroused a prophet and the priest. Let me sit down, guy. Wait a minute, come on, y'all. I haven't got y'all. He aroused the priest to go talk to this guy. And his Bible says he, he first had to wake me up. See, before you can wake anybody else up, you might have to be woken up. What, what is God using to arouse us right now? Is it Corona? Is it what we see in Minnesota? Maybe we've been asleep so much thinking racism was not here because we got a stimulus check. Or maybe you thought, well, our America was just so good now because you got a tax check and oh, my business is good. Maybe God, had, God is arousing us right now and said this undercurrent racism is still ruling our land. And people of God, God may be using this very nefarious spirit to wake us up. I mean, you will sleep on the watch, Pastor. Sleep on the watch with the president. On your duty, you'll sleep on the watch. And God could be using this very thing to wake us all up. To stir up. There should be a righteous indignation in all of us that are saved, white, black, wherever you are. There should be a righteous indignation in you that should be making you upset. I mean, everything can't be sweet. Everything can't be nice. There should be a righteous indignation right now. That make you want to do something. I mean, I don't care if you march, cry, whatever you got to do. Something inside of us should be moving us. And this is what Zechariah is doing. So verse 2 said, they go on, Pastor, all time may get me. Verse 2 said, he said to me, what did you see, boy? He said, I see, I behold, a lampstand, all the gold and bold. It's bold on top of it. Y'all don't care me, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. He said, and the seven lamps <laughs> the lamp on it were seven spots belonging to each of the lamp which are on top of it. Now, that don't make no sense to you. I know that, 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 you gotta have a, that don't probably make no sense to y'all. What is that? That's a seven bowl lamp stand. That sounds kind of very uh, sanctimonious, theological. What, is, what are you saying, Pastor? Well, back in, the, back in the temple, they had this lamp stand in the temple court, and the lamp stand, and, and they had oil like a, like, a, like a trumpet. And they poured the oil in it, and the oil came out into the bowl for the oil, for the, for, the, for the light to continue to burn, for the light to continue to burn. So before there can be a light to be burned, there need to be an instrument to be used. Help me. Before there can be an anointing to, to flow in you, can he use you? Can he use you? There's no power in the lampstand. The power's in the oil. <laughs> There's no power in the lampstand. There's no power in Pastor Levi. I'm just a vessel, but can the oil flow through? And that's what he's showing this young man. I'm just showing you images right now, boy. I'm just showing you images. I'm showing you an image, man. Before a man can be a message, he got to become the message. Ooh, whoa. Before, man can, before a man can give me a message, what are you doing with the office you are holding? Come on now. Before you can bring change, can you be changed? And so he brings this word so clear out. And he said, I'm going to show you a picture that a lampstand is going to say, I need, I need, can you be a conduit, a supplier of my message? 
Mom, dad, sister, brother, lawyer, chief police, sheriff, wherever you are, judges, cashier, wherever you are, can God use you? You know, I used to sing a song, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You know what I'm you can use me. Take my hand, take my feet, you know what I'm saying? Spit, take, speak to me. You, you can use anything, Lord. Is that, is that a song you sing or a life you live? Oh, is that a song we sing? Because now I'm telling you guys, we can't go back to church like we used to. Our worship just can't be song in our heads no more. Our worship now got to go to a whole nother level. But God, I'm living this worship out when I leave the church. I'm worshiping you right now. I want to honor you with my word of God. I want to be a man with a message. Now, let go to verse. I, I want to tell you some verse at 1 8. Jesus said this word to his disciples because they were concerned about when Jesus left them that, that Jesus, the king of kings, was gone. But look what the word of God says. It said, Act 1 8 said, But you will receive power, disciple, when Holy Spirit come on you. He said, And you shall be a vessel for me. There you go again. See, the power of God needs a vessel. He need a vessel to you, a vessel to you. He so you may you may be a witness for me through all out the earth. Let me give you a, give you a, a synopsis here of the juxtaposition or uh, the contrast here. If Holy Spirit can't use us, something else will. If Holy Spirit can't use us, something else will. Cause just like God looking for a vessel, so the devil. Uh huh. Just like. Come on now, if, if, if Holy Ghost can't use us, the enemy used everything in our past, our hurt. Listen, you're going to hear my story a few, weeks now, a, a few weeks from now from Father's Day about my father's situation. And if I'm not careful, I will allow all that foolishness, that craziness, that conundrum that was not there in my life. And the devil will use all of that to be a bad father or think less of myself. Or not be after my children. He will use that either way. So I want to be a voice of God. I want to be a vessel of God that he can use, that his power can be within. Right now, you got the power of God inside of you. But can you be a vessel that he can use? Let's go to verse 3. Bible says that also, he said this is what he saw. He saw also two olive trees by it. On one on the right side of a bowl. And the other side, a left side. There we go. The olive trees represent the oil, the, 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 the lampstand, they are the vessels, but the trees represent the oil. If you're going to be a voice of God to stir people up, I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about putting people in the right position, you're going to have, you're going to need the oil. That's an anointing on you. There are people who are trying to do stuff without the anointing. There are people trying to be a voice right now. I'm telling you, it's right now I'm calling on pastors, priests, ministers, wherever you are, be a voice in your construct. Don't, don't let nobody else speak out for you. Speak up. Speak up. Say something. Your silence is also saying something. So speak up. Speak out. Be the righteous of God. But you got to do it under the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what God is wanting you to do. And I do it with if the men are going to have a message. We got to have the anointing. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. We got to have the anointing. It is the anointing of God that destroys the yoke. It is the anointing of God that gives us strength like no other. It is the anointing of God that allowed me to speak wisdom and I don't know what to say. There are times my daughters go through stuff and I think I have all the words to say. I don't know what to say. I got folks in my, in my church who lose a loved one and I don't have the words to say. It's the anointing of God that gives you the word to say at the right season, at the right time. I'm asking God to give us the anointing of God that can help us bring peace to a healing land. Woo! Look at God. Let's go to verse. Y'all okay, me, guys? Y'all okay? Y'all okay? Y'all okay? All right, all right. All right. All right let's, go to, let's, go to, let's go to verse. Fourth, he said, he said to the Lord, the angel, who was speaking to me, saying, what are these, my Lord? Verse 5 says, so the angel was speaking with his, and, and answered and said to me, do you not know what these are? He said, well, no. <laughs> well, no. Now, you would think this guy being a priest and a prophet. You don't know what that is. I mean, you're a priest and a prophet. But have you ever been in a place where you just adored by God? That the power of God getting you so strong, your whole brain go tilt. Yes, <laughs> oh Lord, I'm scared to say I do know or I don't know right now. Because when you stand before God, you're like, oh, I, you know God. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Even, and I might know. I might know what to say. Have you ever been in a room the power of God falls so strong, 
and you in your heart, you know what to say. But because God's in the room, you know, you just keep your mouth closed until you like you until you speak, God, I'm going to keep my mouth closed. Because in my cognitive domain, I know stuff I should say, but I don't know what to say. He's oh, OK, good. Then, my man, look at verse five. And the angel said, the angel or the angel who was speaking with me, he asked me and said, do you not know what these are? He said, Lord, no, no, my Lord. Verse six said, then he said, he said to me. This is the word you're going to give to Zerubbabel. I'm glad you said no, because if I hadn't told you, you would have told Zerubbabel, what I saw is a lampstand and what I saw are trees. <laughs> God help me, Lord. I'm glad you said no, because you're right. I, I want you to see more than what you saw. See, you got to see more than what you see in your child. You got to see more. You got to see more than what they visualize to you. You got to see more than what they put in that. If not, you will call me with a message. Don't do that. A man with a message, mom with a message, tend to not say what they see. Now, they're not blind to what they see. They're not blind to what they see. Now, I, my child came in late last night. She came in late. I saw that. But what is, what, the, what, what is God really showing me? Maybe the issue is not her coming in late. Maybe I've been too passive a dad. Woo! 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 This heavy stuff. I know it's heavy. Maybe what I'm seeing is not what I'm seeing. I admit what I saw. Maybe why my wife and I are always arguing at 10 at night. Hmm. These are facts to things, but what, a, what is this message really saying to me? Well, I can have a message to something. I got to first see what God's saying about it. And so Zerubbabel, <laughs> boy, it's good stuff. I know him. Zerubbabel, he said, here's what you're going to say to Zerubbabel. Because what you just saw was not for you anyway. It's for somebody else. So here's what I want you to do, Zerubbabel. Just like I'm stirred you up, I want you to go stir up Zerubbabel. And here's what I want you to tell Zerubbabel. Because when he first started building this thing, he knew how to lay down plumb line. He knew how to put up wood. Matter of fact, he knew, he knew how my temple used to look. So here's what he's going to use. He's going to use the old stuff, how the church used to look. Ooh, ooh. If we're not careful, God will bring us back to our churches, and we'll go back to the old worship lifestyle. Jesus help me. If we're not careful, we'll go back to the same old division, acting like we are the church. No, God said, stir him up another way. Because this time, I went, verse 5, I look how he said it. Verse, verse 6 said, this time, it's not going to be by his might. It's not going to be by his power. But it's going to be my spirit this time. Uh-oh. This time, I'm going to build through him. For the first time, he did what's right. He did the best he can as a dad. You did the best you can as a mom. The best you can as a college student. And you did all you can in your strength. But baby, I'm going to sit back down for I run around this church. And this time, we're going to, this time, this time, when you start building my house, we're going to build like I want it. This time, when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. This time, this time, this time, this time, because I need all your might to run out. I need all your strength to run out. I need you to pray and say, Lord, I need your help. Good. I'm willing to be your vessel. If you can use anything, use me. But this time, let me use you. Because even though you're going to build this time, I can't promise you obstacles won't come again. Because they're coming. I can't promise you that just because you're in God's will, Life won't happen. Don't tell that lie to me. I can't promise you that just because you go to church, life won't happen. I can't promise you. I can't give you all that. But what I can promise you, that if the Spirit of God is in you, he give you the strength to go through, the might you need, the power you need. If, he, if he's in with you, if he's with you, but see, he got, this is it. This is it, though. Can you and can I be men with a message? <laughs> and can you be a voice now? That stir things up. A good stirring voice. Because God want to use you to stir something up. And so here's how he tells him, Dr. Rob. Tell this guy, I want you to build now through my spirit. This time, I'm going to anoint you so powerful, people are going to look at you and wonder how. They're going to know how you, how you get through that. I don't want to turn around and talk to you, Mr. Charlie. People wondering right now how you got through. This man lost his wife a couple months ago. And now he's sitting here beside me. He's in this place. We don't know, he don't know how he's getting through. He don't even know how he's gotten here. But because of God, not because of his own might, not because of his own strength, but only because of power and anointing of the almighty God. This man right here is going to have a battle of cancer. 
fought through cancer, not still sitting beside me, living today. That ain't by his own strength. That's not by his own might. God has blessed us. So God is using us to bring us through our stuff to stir people back up. We're not talking, this ain't no false gospel. We're not throwing stuff in the mud, on the wall, and hope it stick. We've been through stuff. We've gone through stuff. We've seen God move. And so we want to be men <laughs> with the message. Oh, it's time you to stir your, you do have a voice, Mom. You do have a voice, Dad. You do stop saying you're no, no good. I bound the spirit of insecurity that's riding your back and think that everything, you can't say yes to everything. There's some gotta be some no's to something. Gotta be no's to no's to something. Everything can't be, yeah, yeah. whatever y'all gonna do, do it. No, that gotta be said, no, we're not having that today. We're not doing that today. We're not going that today. We're going this way today because I feel God is speaking to me that way. Oh, let me get out of this text, y'all. Listen, listen. Let me get out of this text. Y'all, y'all, y'all okay with me? All right, then verse, verse 7. Here I love, I love verse 7. I got, I got, I got a few minutes. Verse 7 says, he said, now tell this guy, who, what are you, O great mountain, before the Lord? You will become a plain, and he will bring forth to the top of the stone and shout, grace, grace to it. You might hold my pad for me, your mouth. Listen, listen, if I had a pulpit and I run, preach a little bit. If I had a walk and I run or not. But what he's saying right now is this right here. There's no way you can accomplish what you accomplish without his grace. Mm-hmm. Remember that? You can do the stuff you want to really do for God oh, without his grace. Bibles talk about grace is empowering you to do something you can't do yourself. Zechariah is not rebuilding the temple. The rule is, can you speak that to people now? Can you speak life of your children now? Can you speak life of your wife now? Of your husband? Of your ministry? Of your city? And, and begin to build again. I want you to build again. I want to stir you back up. Go back to school. Do what you got to do. Take some courses. I want to believe again. Zerubbabel, Zechariah is speaking to Zerubbabel. He said, now tell, tell Zerubbabel, what is you, O great mountain? Shit, bye, bye, bye. What is you, O obstacles? What is you, O sickness? What is you, O disease? What are you, O fatherless nation? I'm telling you, I'm speaking life to you now. You can do more than you're doing. Guys, I got to stop get out of here. I'm, I came today and we came stir you up to be a voice for God. That's all we are. I'm asking you right now to allow God to use you again to go back and do what he called you to do. We are men with a message. It don't matter you're male or female, you can be a voice for the message. So I pray for you right now. God bless them and they're coming and they're going. Let them get the same power, anointing that Jesus left that they can have on their lives right now. Receive him as your savior. Receive him as your God. If you're a Christian, get that fresh oil. Go back to doing what you know God has called you to do. Hey, we love you so much. These guys love you. They're praying for you. We're praying for you that God give you what you need. Guys, before I get out of here, I want to give you the opportunity to bless HBWC, not just us in the but bless this nation, nation as we continue to give and bless this community. We will be a void. We will not be quiet. We're not going away private, secretly. We're going to speak up and speak out and be a voice for our nation. So if you want to give in any area of this life, of this message, this ministry, I want to speak life to you right now and give you the opportunity to bless us and bless this ministry. God bless their seed. Give them what they need. Let their seed stir up us to do more for the kingdom. We love you and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, your heart say amen. Hey, guys, again, I love you. I'm Pastor Levi. Hey, we are, we are not going nowhere. Continue to join us, share our page, and we'll see you soon. Be blessed.